Today we are starting with the class 4 of most important current affairs June onwards for the UPSC prelims 2020 and it will be very useful for your UPSC prelims 2021 also. These are the questions which is going to be asked in 2020 also, 2021 also. Today I wanted to wind up the environment current affairs of the June 2020. So I have selected these many topics. Let us see how many we can complete today. But the target is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Total 8. Let us see how many we can complete. First one is Odisha government has a, has come up with a project. They are trying to conserve the Bhitar Kanika fishing cat. So we will try to understand what is this fishing cat species, its status and everything. And we will also see some introduction of Bhitar Kanika uh, protection area. Second is pangolin, very much in news. China has upgraded the protection granted to pangolin, but we will see can that uh, curb the trafficking of the pangolin, a very exotic species. Lonar lake turned pink in your Maharashtra. Lonar lake turned pink, and there was so much on YouTube, so many newspaper. So we will also understand why did it turn pink. And the fourth topic will be decarbonizing transport in India. This is a project of the Indian government. We need to understand. And the, this one is a scheme, a spark, okay? Scheme for promotion of academic and research collaboration. World Crocodile Day. So here we will not be only seeing why World Crocodile Day. We will try to understand what are the different kinds of crocodile, mugger and everything. So we will see the their snout also. How does it look different? New guidelines for import of exotic species. New guidelines have come. We need to understand. And the Coral Triangle Day, this is not uh, directly related to India, but the corals are very important. So we will understand what are the hot spots of coral in the oceanic world. So these are the eight topics. Let us see. So the first topic is Odisha starts project to conserve Bhitar Kanika fishing cat. So a brief introduction about the project. This project has been started by the Odisha Forest Department. Okay, this is not a central government project. This concerns with Odisha only. So this project has been started by the forest department of odisha government okay and this is for a this is for two year this is a two year conservation project for fishing cat this is the fishing cat you can see it goes in the water and, uh, and this does fishing okay so this cat this is a cat fishing cat it, this is this is a project in bhitar kanika national park if you talk about the district the district is kendrapada i will show you the map don't worry district is kendrapada and uh, now your national park is bhitar, bhitar kanika national park a very famous national park so they will do what they will do their mapping survey of the cat population they will come to know how many cats are left and how they are distributed and everything so that is not important uh, now the importance is of their conservation status fishing cats iucn says that these are endangered species you have to remember that yes you have to remember that for the prelims iucn status of bhitar kanika fishing cat is endangered sites sites keeps them in appendix 2 in article 4 very important status by sites also and in the in in the last phase of this lecture i will tell you about the sites also symbolic species of flood plains it is a symbolic species of flood plain deltas and coastal wetlands if you know the geography of the vitar kanika you will understand that this is around flood plain delta coastal wasteland of south and southeast asia south and southeast asia have it, this is not in India only. So no, next thing is that UPSC can ask you a question. Did, does this cat is only found in India? No. This is also found in other countries of the South and Southeast Asia, which have floodplain, delta, and coastal wetlands. Developmental activities are causing the habitat loss of this organism. In 2012, the West Bengal government officially declared the fishing cat as the state animal. So you understand the importance of the fishing cat now. This is in coastal area, delta area. So West Bengal, I mean West Bengal also has this population. West Bengal government was so much concerned about its habitat loss that they had to declare fishing cat as the state animal. Okay, so much importance. So Vitar Kanika National Park is importance is that this is second largest mangrove forest in the country. First one is obviously Sundarbans in West Bengal. Okay, but the second largest mangrove forest is present in Vitar Kanika National Park and its other inhabitants are saltwater crocodile because saltwater and your freshwater is mixing up there, a spotted deer. You have to remember saltwater crocodile. This is in Sundarban also in the mangrove areas. Wild boar, water monitor and several other animals which are not important. So we will have an introduction about the Vitar Kanika National Park. This exactly looks like your mangrove forest of the Sundarbans. I have been there. The image is exactly like the mangroves because these are mangroves. This is salt water and fresh water mixing. 
if you want to see the map this area okay this area here it lies in the coastal area here only is your kendra pada district of the odisha this is the odisha map this is the odisha map here lies your andhra pradesh starting here is your west bengal so in this coastal area your bhitar kanika or you can say simply fishing cat is found in odisha it is present in bhitar kanika national park where we are trying to conserve it bhitar kanika national park if you talk about the area this is a very small national park just 145 km square but that in that a small national park the mangrove forest and the biodiversity is very important it is so small that it is it is present only in one district kendrapada district so this district is kendrapada district one more importance is that in august on august 2002 this site bhitar kanika national park because this is a mangrove forest so shallow water is also present so this was declared as ramsar site ramsar site one of the ramsar site is bhitar kanika national park other ramsar site of odisha is your chilika lake lake chilika so in the center you have the bhitar kanika national park around that you have bhitar kanika wildlife sanctuary also see and that wildlife sanctuary obviously has very large area because the protection status is low i told you so that wildlife sanctuary is 672 km square so you have gahir mata beach there and you remember your gahir mata beach is famous for olive ridley turtle gahir mata beach is famous for olive ridley turtle so here is your olive ridley turtle ne nesting site also breeding site so i said that this is a mangrove forest so there must be mixing of the salt water and fresh water so which is the river flowing over here this is not mahanadi this the river wildlife sanctuary is inundated by the rivers like brahmani baitarni dhamra patsala in that baitarni and brahmani are very important so that's all about your bhitar kanika national park bhitar kanika wildlife sanctuary kendrapada district and fishing cat so this is done now move to the next topic second topic is pangolin what has happened is that protection status of pangolin in china is enhanced upgraded that means china says that we are protecting the pangolin with more effort okay with more zeal but will it lead to curb on its trafficking will it happen really that is the topic we are going to see china accorded the pangolin the highest level of protection and removed the scales of the endangered mammal from its list of approved traditional medicine so previously china was saying that this pangolin scales are very important in traditional chinese medicine okay so they were allowing its trade and everything okay now china says that no this scale cannot be used in traditional medicine and also china has accorded very high level highest level of protection just like in your wildlife protection act you have the list one the highest level of protection china must also be having some list kind of that so china said that we are providing the pangol in the highest level of protection and now its scales will not be listed as the traditional medicine so that their trade stops the trafficking stops upgradation its protection of pangolin and banning all commercial trade of the endangered mammal china has given importance so what are pangolins pangolins are only mammals wholly covered in scales these scales are generally not present in mammals in your insects have a scale some other organisms have a scales but mammals do not have a scales only exception is pangolin that is a mammal but are still wholly covered in a scale and they use those scales to protect themselves you know they just make their uh, body shape round inside the scale they go and the other predators cannot eat them if under threat a pangolin will immediately curl into a tight ball and will use this sharp scale sharp tails to defend themselves these tails are very sharp okay they are stingy and they are like cutting like blade this is the most trafficked mammal in asia okay this is the most trafficked animal mammal sorry mammal in asia and increasingly africa is also showing the interest so your asian your asian pangolin is very much threatened pangolins are high demand in your china and vietnam southeast countries because of traditional medicine value and also some people eat their meat you know in your southeast asia and china everything can be eaten except the human so everything can be eaten so meat this meat is considered a delicacy and scales are used as traditional medicine and folk remedies which china has banned now eight species of pangolins are found pangolinism is not one species pangolin has various species your india also has one pangolin eight species of pangolins are found on two continents okay they range from vulnerable to critically endangered different pangolins have different conservation status i will tell you about the indian pangolin don't worry the two species found in india india has two species one is indian pangolin and one 
चाइनीज पैंगोलिन इज ऑल्सो प्रेजेंट इन इंडिया द इंडियन पैंगोलिन मैन इज क्रेसी कुडाटा एंड द चाइनीज पैंगोलिन मैन इज पेंटा डेक्टाइला दैट मीन्स फाइव डेक्टाइल लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई हैव पॉली डेक्टाइल सिक्स फिंगर्स सो दिस इज मैन इज पेंटा दैट मीन्स फाइव डेक्टाइला सो द इंडियन पैंगोलिन इज हैविंग वलनरेबल स्टेटस एंड चाइनीज पैंगोलिन इज हैविंग इंडेंजर्ड इंडेंजर्ड स्टेटस बाय आई यू सी एन बट बोथ ऑफ दी बट बोथ ऑफ दीज पैंगोलिन्स आउट ऑफ एट आउट ऑफ टोटल एट पैंगोलिन्स बोथ ऑफ दीज स्पेसिज आर फाउंड इन इंडिया सो इफ एन एग्जाम इट कम्स लाइक चाइनीज पैंगोलिन पैंगोलिन इज नॉट प्रेजेंट इन इंडिया यू विल थिंक दैट ओके या इट विल बी प्रेजेंट ओनली इन चाइना नो इट इज प्रेजेंट इन इंडिया ऑल्सो फॉर बेटर मेमोरी आई विल गिव यू सम इंट्रोडक्शन द चाइनीज पैंगोलिन चाइनीज पैंगोलिन इज ए पैंगोलिन नेटिव टू सी नॉर्दर्न इंडियन सब इंडियन सब कॉन्टिनेंट नॉर्दर्न पार्ट्स ऑफ साउथ ईस्ट एशिया एंड साउदर्न चाइना वट डज दैट मीन यू हैव इंडिया हेयर ओके यू हैव इंडिया सॉरी यू हैव इंडिया फाइन जस्ट लाइक दिस सो इन दिस एरिया इन दिस एरिया यू हैव चाइनीज पैंगोलिन and also in the southeast asia you have chinese pangolin that is why northern parts of southeast asia here you have the chinese pangolin in this area and southern china this is southern china here you have the uh, pangolin chinese pangolin and india you have the northern indian subcontinent here in this area you have the chinese pangolin please update the iucn status of chinese pangolin this is critically endangered and i have confirmed from the iucn red list this chinese pangolin is critically endangered don't worry i have updated in the pt uh, ppt also so in the pdf you will get chinese pangolin chinese pangolin is critically endangered and the indian pangolin is not vulnerable this is endangered so chinese pangolin again i tell you it critically endangered that is why china is giving so much of protection i need not draw the map this is the map of the chinese pangolin see this area i had told you and in the northern southeast asia and here is your southern china so this whole area is inhabited by chinese pangolin now talk about the indian pangolin this is your indian pangolin a status is endangered and the area inhabited is like this whole of the india a little bit in pakistan also whole of india and little bit in myanmar also this is your indian pangolin indian pangolin okay this is called thick tailed pangolin or a scaly ant eater so ant eater are pangolin only they eat ants and insects that is why they are called as ant eater features are similarly features are same like your chinese pangolin they will also curl and make a ball out of them now in this topic we will try to understand why did this lonar lake turned pink this is the lonar lake in maharashtra it turned pink so why did it happen let's do some mapping also this is the map of maharashtra this is the map of maharashtra here somewhere is your goa this is lunar lake if you call about the district the district is buldhana district buldhana district of maharashtra is having the lunar lake now this lunar lake or lunar crater also this is called as this is notified as actually national geo heritage monument why geo heritage because this has a very huge significance in geology anyway this is saline soda lake as the place is place is lunar that is why it is called lunar lake so you do not confuse that okay fine somewhere moon's particle got collided with the earth and it was formed no not that lunar the place is lunar that is why it is called lunar lake but the creation was by when long time ago in your pleistocene epoch okay i told you about the pleistocene epoch in the last lecture so in the pleistocene pleistocene epoch one big asteroid collided with the earth it collided here only buldhana district in the india so that is how this lunar lake was created this importance is so much that till the time earth has formed since the beginning all four known hyper velocity impact craters are created anywhere on the earth these are called bas in in basaltic rocks you have basaltic rocks in the deccan on the basaltic rocks only four known hyper velocity craters are created by asteroids this is one of them so where are other three ballistic impact structure one is in southern brazil second is also in southern brazil and the third also is in southern brazil only so what are national geological monuments of india those are jo those geographical areas which are of national importance and heritage and they are notified by the government of india geological survey of india gsi gsi protects them maintains them 
and does their enhancement for geo tourism also these are some of the national geological monuments of india you do not need to remember them don't worry just have a look through go through these are many of them you must not have heard and that is okay that is not going to be asked in your upsc almost 34 34 locations are categorized as national geological monuments of india and lonar lake is one of them so this lonar lake also known as lonar crater is an oval shaped this is oval shaped lake inside lonar sanctuary that area is considered uh, that area is declared as lonar sanctuary because of the forest and everything it is notified as national geo heritage monument and diameter is 1.2 km you do not need to remember that it was created by a meteorite hit on earth 50000 years ago and only four known hyper velocity impact craters on earth on basaltic rocks other three are all in brazil this lake is so old and so important that it is mentioned in your ancient scripts like a skanda puran you remember it is mentioned in a skanda puran it is mentioned in padma puran also and in the medieval india it is mentioned in aine akbari also water is both saline and alkaline in nature so why did it turn pink see the water of the lenar lake in buldana district of maharashtra turned pink pink color recently because of large presence of salt loving halo archaea micro this microbe is almost related to bacteria only but archaea is something different from bacteria very old very old species of the earth are archaea so that halo archaea halo means saline so this is salt loving and this lake is also salt salty alkaline so these halo archaea are present there Halo archaea is a bacteria culture that creates pink pigment and exists in saline water. So once they increased in their number, they create pink pink pigment pigment in the water. They exist in the salt water. So this is was this was because of halo archaea. If UPSC asks you, this happened because of virus or if it happens about algae. So if it is of not in option, so you might mark something. because there was a debate also but if there is an option and it is having halo archaea you have to mark halo archaea our next topic is decarbonizing transport in india project dti project this project is actually an arm of an international project i will tell you about that but in india this decarbonizing is what in transport you should have a transport system you should have a vehicle system which will reduce the carbon emission from the present level so now we need to understand how much carbon we are emitting what is our future trajectory and graph then only we can do the decision making the policy making so that is why the decarbonizing tra- decarbonizing transport project has come or you can simply call it dti project a brief introduction is needed not much into the topic niti ayog in collaboration with international transport forum in india if you talk about india indian decarbonizing transport project that has come by the effort of niti ayog and niti ayog has collaborated with an international organization that is international transport forum together they have launched decarbonizing transport in india project on 24th june 2020 intention is what aim is what to they will develop a pathway that means plan schemes and everything decision making so that a low carbon transport system can be developed in india so decarbonizing transport project in india will be a tailor made that is specifically for indian transport emissions because every country has different types of transport for example in india we have huge railway network so we should focus more on railway emissions also because in india many electricity electricity trains are running but there are many trains which are not using electricity they are still on thermal coal so we have to tackle them also their emission also and for electricity also somewhere the coal is burned right for electricity also ntpc is providing the power sometimes so what this will do this will do government with a detailed understanding government will do government will do survey estimation graphing everything will be done and your future transport activity and according to your future future transport activity you will have some data about the co2 emissions and those emissions and that future transport activity will be related so that you can take you can take a decision that from this transport activity this much co2 emission is happening so can we tweak this kind of transport activity can we come with the electric vehicle can we can we do ethanol blending all those kind of decisions will be taken after conducting this project that is decarbonizing transport project in india developed by niti ayog in collaboration with international transport forum so where is this international transport forum international transport forum 
is an arm of OECD. OECD, the Organization of Economically Developed Countries. Actually, India is not a member, but OECD is known as Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development (OECD). So, International Transport Forum is present at OECD, and it is an intergovernmental organization with 60 member countries. Now, it acts as a think tank for transport policy and organizes annual summit for transport ministers of every country. So, that is how it is helping Niti Aayog do this project of DTI project. Now, you must be confused that India is not part of OECD, but India is part of International Transport Forum. Why? ITF is the only global body that covers transport modes. This is one point. Now, the main point is that ITF is administratively integrated with OECD. but politically autonomous in that pol- because it is politically autonomous india has become a member of itf international transport forum since 2008 only it's not like that you if you are not not part of oecd then you will not be part of o- any oecd activity this body is politically autonomous that is why you are part of it since 2008 only also remember pesa test right pesa test for a school going a student that is also an initiative of oecd but still india is taking part so that can happen also remember your beps project base erosion and profit shifting that was developed by oecd later it was taken over by g20 also but initially developed by oecd also oecd only but still india is having the beps project so this is a possibility no issues about that when i was explaining you this decarbonizing transport in india i told you that this is a part of a bigger project worldwide and this is only indian arm so what is that bigger project that bigger project is decarbonizing transport in emerging economies so india is an emerging economy this dtee project that is decarbonizing transport in emerging economies it is a project which will support transport decarbonization in various emerging economies so not all emerging economies are part of it but recently currently india argentina azerbaijan and morocco are part of it so current participants are only four of decarbonizing transport in emerging economies and india is see one of the strongest and most important member here out of four so that is why india is implementing decarbonizing transport project in india with the help of niti aayog and itf international transport forum dtee overall dtee worldwide dtee in your emerging economies in these four countries is a collaboration between various organization one is itf which is helping your niti aayog second is see wapertel institute you do not need to know about them international climate initiative is also taking part german federal this this is this international climate initiative is of german federal ministry of environment nature conservation and nuclear safety so germany is helping us somehow so that's all about it in the powerpoint i have also included an introduction of oecd this is written as oecd sorry oecd so you can pause the slide and read about that not a problem you just need to remember that india is not a member of oecd and oecd was founded in the year 1961 to stimulate world trade and economic progress oecd first of all originated in 1948 only that time it was called as organization for european economic cooperation later it changed its name because they said that it has a world significance in world trade and economic progress now it is known as oecd currently it is an organization of 36 countries it is an intergovernmental organization it is not about ngo already taught everything about it so you do not need to wait for uh, ppt and everything you just have gone through this this is all about oecd one more thing when i told you about the european community and everything european union i have told you about it, right in the previous lectures i have told you the emergence of european union when it was oecc oecc o double ec sorry when your oecd was oecc that is organization for economic cooperation that time it was instrumental in helping the establishment of european economic community now the european economic community i have already told you that developed into european union so that is so much of significance of it our next topic is a spark a spark is a scheme a scheme for promotion of academic and research collaboration who has launched this scheme you need to remember no more details is needed but still i will explain you union hrd minister now what now ministry of education right ministry of education but that time ministry of human resource and development minister launched the web portal this is a web portal of the scheme was launched web portal of the scheme was launched the scheme for promotion of academic and research collaboration it was launched in new delhi this 
as the name says it all uh, research collaboration research collaboration between indian universities only or also the foreign universities no this will lead to research ecosystem improvement in india's higher educational institution this is for higher educational institutions and how does it work for that this will be academic and research collaboration between indian institutions and the best institution in the world in those areas in higher education there is an, there is a there is a timeline also the union government in august 2018 has sanctioned a spark a total cost of 418 crore for implementation up to 31st march 2020 so now the implementation has started which body is implementing agency in india indian institute of technology iit kharagpur is the national coordinating institute to implement the spark program so you have iit kharagpur here okay that iit kharagpur will be collaborating with mit and other colleges of the usa your oxford college and everything so that collaboration is known as a scheme for promotion of academic and research collaboration now the implementation phase has started so they have launched a web portal also so how they uh, th how they are planning to do the work under this what kind of research almost 600 joint research proposals will be awarded for 2 years 600 joint research proposal that means any of india's higher education institute will be selected and they will be collaborated with the best top institutes in the world that type projects will be 600 in number that will be completed in 2 2 years so that a strong research collaboration between india and global research groups is done in those areas which which are cutting edge of science or those areas which have direct social relevance to the mankind science should work for the mankind so either they have direct social relevance otherwise they have cutting edge of science so that in future they can help the hum help the humanity so eligibility only such institutions can apply which are in top 100 national institute of national national institute ranking framework you know your ministry releases this nirf ranking also you can check your college's ranking so in that ranking only top 100 ranked ranked institutions will be eligible or top 100 nirf subject ranking either you are in overall college ranking top 100 otherwise if you are in your area subject ranking top 100 then also you are eligible for foreign universities the bank benchmark is either you cannot apply your nirf on the foreign institution but you have to select the best foreign institution also so for that you can use the qs ranking 500 top or qs subject wise ranking 200 top got it okay so already we have done so many topics odisha project we have done bitter kanika we have understood pangolin we have done we have also understood the two indian pangolins two pangolins which are present in india you can say chinese pangolin is also present in india indian pangolin is also present in india third was lunar lake very important topic decarbonizing transport india is also done your spark scheme is also done a brief introduction was needed so that you at least know what what is the subject of the spark upsc ask questions like this what is the spark scheme and you get confused so five topics are done so what i will do now i will mix up some july month environment current affairs with this these three okay world crocodile day new guidelines for import of exotic species and coral triangle day so that this lecture limits between limits inside uh, limits in 30 minutes only so the next lecture will have these three topics also and some topics of the july month environment current affairs also so that's all in today lecture see you tomorrow